All right, a postcard. Finally, some art I can get behind. I mean, what better way to learn about art than watching an overcrowded picnic spot? From the offset, this seems like a very casual work of art, and in some respects, it is. But that shouldn't be considered a bad omen. Imagine all the self-serious works of art. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but we deserve a break every once in a while. And that's where Georges Seurat comes in. So, let's sit back, take a sip, and chill on a sunny Sunday afternoon on a French island. Before we chill, if you enjoy our content, please hit the like and subscribe button. Imagine you're living in Paris in the final quarter of the 19th century. Impressionism is taking over the art world. Some are raging about it, calling it the next big thing in the Western tradition. Others claim it's a cheap joke and that impressionists merely masquerade under the guise of expression to hide their lack of skill. Whoa, that was a mouthful. Anyway, so everyone's painting en plein air, meaning in open air, with loose brush strokes breaking with centuries worth of tradition. Artists hungry to break the mold are being shunned by the salon, the primary arbiter of taste in the city. But you see the merit of these new works, particularly how they deal with color. But let's take a closer look at this painting. What was Seurat actually painting? We see many people relaxing, but wait, is that a monkey? And what is this woman doing, fishing? It sure is strange. This area was known as a place to procure prostitutes, and believe it or not, these are curious symbols of it. Who would have thought? Georges Seurat attended École des Beaux-Arts in Paris in the late 1870s, where he must have come across a conservative approach toward arts. In 1873, the Salon Rejects came together to form Société Anonyme Cooperative des Artistes, Peintres, Sculpteurs, Graveurs. The group included hotshots like Cézanne, Monet, Renoir, Degas, Pissarro, and of course Seurat. Out of all these, Seurat might have been the only one who was inspired by dyes. Yes, you heard me, dyes. Meet this man, Michel Eugène Chevreul. Working with dyes and tapestries at the Gobelins Manufactory in Paris, Chevreul noticed a peculiar yet intriguing phenomenon known as simultaneous contrast. What this means in simple terms is that colors appear darker or lighter with respect to the surrounding colors. A real life analogy for this might be stepping out from darkness and into the sunlight. The light blinds you because your eyes have gotten accustomed to the dark. In 1839, Chevreul wrote a book explaining the phenomenon and how it works in visual arts is like this. The color of a pigment or paint might look different depending on its immediate surroundings. Quite straightforward, isn't it? Then there are two gentlemen, Ogden Rood and James Clerk Maxwell. Rood put forward the idea that color could be divided into three things, purity, luminosity, and hue. Maxwell, on the other hand, proved the young Helmholtz theory, or the trichromatic color theory using linear algebra. He also experimented with red, blue, and green filters to produce colored images, positing tint, shade, and hue as primary components of color perception. But what does all of this have to do with art, particularly this famous painting? Well, you might have heard of the term neo-impressionists, which is used to describe artists like Seurat, Signac, and Pissarro. Well, these guys developed a color theory based on the ideas we've just discussed. They realized that the optical mixing of colors would produce an effect more vibrant and far greater than that of mixing regular pigments. Seurat had always been interested in color, but recent advances in science, pigment manufacturing, and modern art led him to a unique style. He wondered what would happen if dots of different colors were placed in such close proximity to each other that they could not be separated by the viewer from a distance. This was the start of his journey with Paul Sinak to develop what they called divisionism and what we refer to today as pointillism. But, why was he obsessed with the clean output of colored points that blend to give a unique impression? For that, we have to look at his private life. Incredibly private, extremely distant, and quite secretive, Seurat lived in seclusion, away from his family. When he passed away at the young age of 31, his family found out that he had been living with a working-class mistress with whom he had a son. So, the order, isolation, and precision of his personal relationship might give you some insight into his obsession with individual dots. While studying École des Beaux-Arts, he had come across people with all kinds of ideas, but none shared his concerns. He was interested in color, and in one letter, he claims to have been looking for a valid theory of color since the age of 17. 
at a time when official juries, art connoisseurs, and even most artists were interested in mythological and historical works, he was fascinated by modern life. The gritty, industrial modern life was not as easy to romanticize as a verse by Ovid or the adventures of a certain French leader. But he found a way. Just take a look at these pictures. They might not be brimming with joie de vivre, but they certainly have an almost decorative charm of their own. Work on a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte began in 1884, and according to the initial plans, it might not have been that different from a vibrant Impressionist work. However, over the following two years, Seurat toiled over the canvas, placing endless dots which, despite being individually distinct, formed a solid and luminous form when seen from a distance. It seems like a magic trick at first, but once you observe it really closely, you start to notice how the effect is achieved. This painting might initially seem similar to the work of Impressionists, in that it's vibrant and shows people enjoying life in a domestic scene in open air. Wrong! Seurat's practices lay in stark contrast to the Impressionist M.O. Given the intricate nature of the process, he preferred to work in isolation. While the Impressionist preferred loose brush strokes, Seurat was far more methodical, painstakingly putting dots one by one in his studio. He visited the island multiple times and made around 30 oil sketches, some 28 preparatory drawings, and three canvases. And that's just all the stuff we know. The Impressionists were driven by their whims. They were interested in the spontaneity of life. Here the characters seem more like shapes than actual people, and that makes sense once you realize that they were added afterward to add life to the landscape. Look at a painting from Monet. Look how comfortable they look. To notice the contrast between Seurat and the Impressionists, let's look at these two works side by side. One is brimming with active subjects, and the other presents a collection of characters who are together yet somehow apart. They seem almost stuck in time. Whereas Renoir might be grateful for the leisure afforded by modern lifestyles, the hermit-slash-artist offers a different reading. But then we might be reading too much into it. The pointillist claimed that he wanted to make modern people move about as the Parthenon frees. Look at ancient Egyptian and Hellenistic art, both of which inspired the artist, and you notice the actions of each individual. The same can be said of a Sunday afternoon, where the actions of each actor can be mulled over and scrutinized. But the real charm of the painting comes from the harmony that emerges from their collective presence, just like old friezes. And it's a testament to the post-impressionist command of composition and color that it all forms such a delightful rendering of a sunny Sunday afternoon. An interesting thing about this work that you really miss watching it on a screen is that it is big. And I mean big, big. The canvas is 81.7 inches by 121.25 inches, which comes to almost 2 meters by 3 meters. In other words, it is wider than the combined length of your grandma and mine if they were to lie down in a queue. In any case, he finally finished this piece by the time he was 25. By the time Georges Seurat passed away at the tender age of 31, he had left an iconic legacy behind. His ideas about color would prove inspirational to modern artists. After all, one is hard-pressed to find another 19th century artist who is experimenting in such a functionally unique manner. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What do you think about pointillism? Leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you in the next one.